Hey, what's up? This your boy Norris. Welcome back to my style channel. Uh, today, I'm about to just chop it up with you and just tell you about my shoemaking experience. For Christmas, wifey gave me a shoemaking uh, class and she ordered supplies too so we could do it together. And it was amazing. Um, because we sew and design, um, we thought that it wasn't too far off from what we do, but actually it's a little bit more involved than actual sewing. Um, there's so much involved with lasting and um, the build out with padding and gluing and taping. Um, it felt like a, a huge art project. And at the end we had some dope Jordans. Um, uh, let me show you. For those that haven't been following my social media, these are the Jordan ones that I created. Um, it has a purple bottom. Um, shoe making isn't super, super expensive, but it's, it's not cheap at all. Um, the really cool thing about this process was um, working with working with leather and, and glue and tape. That's something that we don't really do when it comes to sewing garments. Um, it's usually just sewing and fabric and interfacing. Um, uh, the, the fusible interfacing, which is the, the interfacing that glues onto your fabric, that's about the closest thing we come to it when it comes to glue and, and, and taping some up. But uh, it, it was really cool. Um, the class that we took was at the shoe surgeon. Um, he's a really good instructor. Um, when it comes to sewing, if, if you're a beginner in sewing, um, there are some things that you might need to know prior to taking this class, but he do walk you through working with a sewing machine for the first time. Um, one thing that I wish we would have had was an industrial sewing machine because we really push our home sewing machines to the limit. Um, it can be done, but working with an industrial machine would make it a lot um, easier. Um, but I thought it was pretty cool to work with a last for the first time. Um, this is my size 10 shoe last and pulling the leather onto the actual last was probably one of the most difficult things because you have to get all the wrinkles off the toe and you have to make sure everything is even and um, hammering, hammering it down and shaving off the leather. I used um, regular leather here and also here, but as you can see, this is patent leather on the toe and also right here on the sides. Um, it was also cool learning how to string up the sole, as you can see. You know, threading the sole, pulling them and knotting them just so it won't come off. Um, my shoes aren't perfect. Um, there's little imperfections here and there, but I look at shoes as already made and I see some similar imperfections. So just seeing that, I know that it happens even in manufacturing. Um, I use the Travis Scott backward swoosh, as you can see. So I took my pattern for this swoosh and I just scaled it out. I wanted it to be proportionate to the small one. So I just scaled it out and retraced um, and just pretty much created a pattern for this particular swoosh. And I mean, it looked pretty good to me. Um, would I do it again? Absolutely. Wife and I, we already ordered a whole nother pair of shoes. Oh, that's another thing. Um, these soles, I don't think they really sell these. So you have to buy a whole new pair of shoes and just rip them off the bottom just so you can make another pair. So you like destroying one shoe to make a custom shoe. Um, which is, I mean, if, if you buy a really cool, dope looking shoe, um, it just hurts to tear it apart. Also one of the most challenging steps with this process was putting um, the actual sole on. It's a very, it's a very stressful and intimidating step. So before you put it on, you have to put glue on the bottom of this and then glue on the bottom of the act and glue on the inside of the sole and around the sole. And then you have to heat it. And you only have maybe like seconds. I say like like 25 seconds to put it on before the glue cools off. So heating it up with the glue gun, snapping it on here, making sure it's lined, making sure um, there's no wrinkles in it, making sure it's flat to the actual leather. I mean, it's, it's really, it's really stressful. But once you put it on and it's in place, um, you get a, a sigh of relief. Well, I, I think I had to, I think I had to like pull it out, snap it again, I think on one of the shoes, but it actually worked. And it's lined up nice and straight, even with the front. I don't know, it might be a, it might be a little off, but when you're wearing it, you really can't tell. But like I said, once again, the shoes are really comfortable 
and they fit and they um, they fit perfect. But at the end, it's worth it because you have your own custom shoe. So the class was a 30 day class. Um, the way they set up every day, you have something to work on. And the days that there weren't any videos, it was just, it was catch up uh, days. So wife and I, we might spend a total of like maybe five or six days actually working on it because we were so busy. We was behind and then one night we did a whole bunch of stuff and we caught all the way up. Um, but yeah, it was a really good experience. Um, it was super fun. I'm glad wifey did it with me. Um, you should go check out her joints. They are dope as hell. Uh, she did like some leather, she did like some leopard prints and a gold swoosh. I mean, they're, they're really cool. I just recently photographed them and styled them with a full look so you know that they actually work, they fit, and they are comfortable. Oh yeah, also a few months back, I interviewed Drew Barrios on my Dope Man So Live. Um, his Instagram handle is um, at 32. And he was the first one that I really was inspired by to make my own shoes prior to my wife um, buying this course for Christmas. So. Um, he actually gave us a tour on the live on his machines, the the, fat, the leathers, um, all the different uh, tools that he'd be using, and it was really cool to see. And I just I just didn't picture me actually doing it, but once wifey got it for Christmas and we both went through the process, um, I can I understand everything that he was talking about from the fulfillment um, of, of making them to the stressful time of putting the soles on and, and all that stuff. So shout out to Drew for that. A few years back, making my first garment was really fulfilling. I mean, you took just, you took this fabric, you sold it up and made it this three dimensional thing and you could wear it. I think with shoe making, it multiplies that feeling like times 10 because shoes, just, it just looks like something you really can't do at home. And for me to actually see these, they, I mean, it, it, even right now looking at them, I'm just surprising myself that I actually made it. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the process was really fun, really cool. Um, if you could do it with somebody, y'all can go back and forth and just help each other. Uh, that's what me and wifey did. So that alone was fulfilling. Like I said, wife and I, we can't wait until our new uh, shoes come in so we can tear them up and do the whole process all over again. Uh, this time we're gonna do um, the Jordan 1 lows instead of the, the highs, just so we can have a, a different version of, of the shoe. All right, that's about it. I hope this video somehow gives you a taste of what goes into shoe making just a little bit in case you're interested or um, even if you never thought about making, sh making shoes, hope this inspires you um, to take a class and try it for yourself, all right? So just as always, like, comment, and also subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.